So it's 94 degrees out. I might have to freaking cut back on daytime riding because it's starting to get a little bit too hot, a little bit too humid in, in Houston to be doing all this riding, but we're still going to make it happen for you guys. We're going to make the most of it. We're going to try to, you know, stay hydrated, even though I haven't had a single liquid today. No water, no coffee. It's middle of the day, so, you know, I'm off to a good start. I don't have a whole lot planned except for going to ride in a new part of Houston. I typically stay downtown, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to start branching out. So we're going to go to the university district or university place. I don't know what it's called. I feel like I haven't done like a bike update in a while, and that's just because nothing has changed on the re-road. And in fact, I think I'm like 98% done with this bike. I don't see myself really doing a, a bunch of more upgrades because I'm not going to upgrade just for the sake of upgrading. I've been in this space for too long. I've owned too many bikes to realize what's important is getting the bikes to feel how you want them to feel, to be able to do what you want them to do. In this bike, the reroad, power, perfect. Controller, great. Battery, the range on this thing lasts for all of the riding that I do. Got the sumos on there now, check. Brakes are done, check. Like, I really don't, suspension is good out of the box. I mean, I got the Fast Ace 2.0 is right out of the box. I don't need to do anything else to this bike. However, I'm gonna be doing, I think two other things to this bike before I call it wraps. One I can tell you about, one I won't be able to tell you about right now, just because I wanna keep it a little mystery. But the one is I'm gonna be getting this thing powder coated by Charge Coatings in Kima, Texas. It'll still be, I don't know, a month or two before I make that happen because I need to save up my pennies because summer is coming up. My kiddo is coming back to Houston and uh, yeah, you know, priorities. I don't need to be spending my last freaking dollar on bikes, even though, you know, I do spend, I, I mean, I spend a lot. My most spent money on bikes, I don't even think it's like bike parts or anything like that. I think it's when I go out. It's like when I ride to the city, I gotta pay for the gas to get to the, whatever city I'm gonna ride in. I gotta pay for the food while I'm there or coffee while I'm there. And it's just like, you know what, you do that every week. If you look at your receipts, man, you end up paying a whole, whole bunch of money that you're like, dang, that's where all my money's going, not the actual bike itself. You get the bike where you want it, you don't have to pay no more. Uh, maybe some pads. And that reminds me, I should probably get some brake pads soon. But really, there's not a whole lot of, what do they call that? Recurring cost with electric bikes, which is another reason why they're so great. Uh, 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 na, 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 na. You know, for how ghetto Houston can be in certain places, it also can be just as beautiful if you find the right places. And that's something that I've learned the longer that I've been here. Like when I first got here, it was just like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna move to Houston. Like you're gonna get shot. You're gonna da 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 the drugs, the crime, da 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 da. You know, people always got something to say because they're not, you know, they're not from here. And if you just read the news and online stuff, you're like, oh yeah, this place is super ghetto. And I mean, to be honest with you, yeah, there's a lot of ghetto parts to Houston, but there is just as many beautiful parts. Like this campus, beautiful the surrounding area like this medical district when you just saw with the trees and all that stuff like come on man that's super nice it is kind of hard to appreciate the niceness though when it's freaking 95 degrees out humid and you want to just die but you're out making a youtube video because you want to stay consistent and disciplined and you know prove to yourself that you can stick to something and stay committed and create something that you're proud of. Okay, let me stop getting into <laughs> why I'm trying to make YouTube videos. Anytime I see someone in pants and it's hot out, what do you think to yourself? Man, you're out here in pants and 100 degree weather and they'll always say something dumb like, oh, but it's not that hot. I'm not that hot. Bro, you're lying. You're lying. 
It is absolutely hot. And I know you're sweating. I could see the sweat on your chest and in your armpits and your back. It looks like you just went through a sprinkler. How are you going to tell me it ain't hot? And I'm going to be your tour guide today. This is Rice Stadium. And fun fact, I was just at Rice Stadium like a couple days ago. And I went to a UFL game. And do you think that a couple days ago that it was less hot? No, it was deathly hot. I'm walking through the stadium and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so hot. But then at the same time, I was like, you know what? I got 50 yard best tickets you can probably get for like $6. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to my seat. I'm gonna watch some good football. I don't know anything about any of the players here. All I know is that the UFL is, some are ex NFL players or aspiring NFL players. It's basically like minor league baseball. That's that's how the UFL is. It's like minor league football. And so I'm just sitting there and I'm watching some football. And I just got to a point, man, where I was like, okay, this is cool. Football in the summertime. But I gotta go. Literally, it was so hot. This was me at almost halftime of the game. I freaking walk out of security and the little security lady's like, I just want to let you know, if you walk out... We can't let you come back in, so you're free to go, but, you know, just know that there's no re-entry. And I'm like, Psh, I'm out. No thanks. I'm, I will, I'll enjoy my two quarters of football and go home. And I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people walking out right now because it's too damn hot. So, I think what we should do is find something to either eat or drink. We didn't freaking Google any any places to look up any reviews. Alright, so we have Croissant Broche, Brioche, French Bakery, Pop-Up Collection, um, Tea. Oh, okay. Biddy's and Bo's Coffee. Yep, we're gonna try that. We are trying Biddy's and Bo's. Let's see what you guys got. Bike looking beautiful. Dang. Hopefully they take Apple Pay. I like the vibes. Hello, can you guys do like an ice caramel latte? Sure, ice caramel latte? Yes, please. Human rights movement disguised as a coffee shop. How do they squeeze that? Radically inclusive. All right, you guys, so we just got done with Biddy and Bo's. I got the caramel latte and the cinnamon roll. I didn't know before I went into this place that um, this was like a movement to help, uh, how do you say, mentally challenge people. Everyone was so friendly. The energy in there was good. The workers were great and they were so nice and kind and they're pretty fast with getting out um, the coffee and stuff like that. So shout out to them for that. However, you know, I do pride myself on being honest with my reviews. Whether that's about bike stuff, food, whatever. I might not be the best reviewer, but I am gonna keep it a buck, as the culture would say, with you guys. As far as the cleanliness of the restaurant, the niceness of the staff, the speed of service, 10 out of 10. Great experience, I love the energy in there. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as that coffee goes, and that cinnamon roll, that was horrible. That was god awful. I mean, Jesus Christ. I I mean, I I mean the coffee 5.1 5.1 out of 10. It lacked all flavor. It tasted the beans were not fresh from the taste of it. It just it wasn't it. It was not it. I'll tell you that. And the cinnamon roll, I don't know what kind of cinnamon roll that was if it was store bought and they just heated it up but man that the cinnamon roll wasn't hitting either um i would give the cinnamon roll a uh, 4.6 and i'm not trying to be mean i think it's awesome that that a place like that exists for people who are mentally challenged to have a, an employment opportunity and that you know part of each sales goes towards helping those that are disabled i think that is incredible in itself. I almost want to get another coffee place just to make up. Okay, let me stop talking about it. Let me stop talking about it. No, I'm just digging myself a hole. People are going to be thinking I'm talking crap about the disabled people, and I'm not. 
And the more I talk, the more I'm just freaking hurting, hurting me. I want to see if the top speed is affected by uh, these sumos. Because before I hit, what did I hit, 55? Yeah. Before I hit 55 on this thing, and uh, I know that these wheels are heavier, so I want to see if it's going to lower my top end or not. All right, here we go. My speedometer said 55, and I did change the setting to uh, the 17 inch gear ratio in this thing. So we'll have to see at the end uh, what the Strava app says, if I actually did hit 55 or not. I, uh, I felt like I might have been able to keep opening it up a little bit, but I came up on these people, so I couldn't, I couldn't keep going. But it felt pretty good. But overall, it's pretty chill riding over here in this part of the city. I would ride here more often. I just feel a little bit uneasy because I don't know this part of the city. So in the event that something happened and I needed to get out of a jam, um, I would be scrambling, like just trying to wing it. Whereas like when you ride in places that you know, it's very easy to know where to go in the event of trouble. But other than that, I, I like the views over here. I like the calmness of it. It smells cleaner too because there's not as many homeless people over here. So it's like the air is even better. You go downtown, sometimes it's like, dang, dude, it smells like a porta potty in some of the parts. In some of the parts, not all the parts. All right, let's hit some wheelies. At least one for the video's sake. Look, we can still do it. We still got it. We still got it. I don't practice them, uh, practice uh, wheeling enough to get good at them, but just enough to not forget how to do it. We made it back to the Jeep, safe and sound. Let's look up the Strava data on the top speed real quick before I let you guys go. Top speed was 52.6, not bad. So that means the difference between the speedometer and GPS is two point something miles. Um, and I do feel like I could have given it a little bit more. So I'm gonna be doing that test again, trying to see what the top speed is. Uh, without having to break because of cars in front of me. But yeah, still getting over 50 with the re-road and the heavy tires and uh, and all that. This thing is f***ing awesome. Still love this thing. But yeah, when people ask me, oh, what bike you should get? Oh, I'll get a Sauron. <laughs> get a Talaria. I won't I won't freaking get an E-Ride Pro or a Ventus bike. I'm no longer going to try to sell you guys on this. I'm just going to enjoy it and love it and appreciate it and be thankful that I found this freaking gem. But anyways, that was all that I have for you guys this week. I will see y'all next week. Yeah, I'm just talking to myself, sitting in the AC, trying to work myself up into getting out of the car, unloading, and riding. All right, we got this.